Thanks for tuning in. Easter is around the corner and I wanted to bake something that is often eaten at Easter brunch in the Netherlands. Hi, I'm Twan. Welcome to my kitchen. If you're new to this channel, I focus on cooking foods from my home country, the Netherlands, and some of its former colonies, such as Indonesia. One of the breads you'll often see at the brunch table around Easter is pastel. It is very similar to the kerstol I baked around Christmas time. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. The only difference is that you don't dust it with powdered sugar. In the northwest region of the Netherlands, you'll also see duivenkater on the brunch table. It's from Old Dutch, Duivelskakor, which means devil's cake. It is a bread in the shape of a bone that in the olden days was used as an offering to the gods. To make the bread dough, you will need 525 grams of bread flour, 225 milliliters of whole milk, 110 grams of superfine sugar, 75 grams of butter, the zest of one lemon, one egg, 10 grams of instant yeast, 5 grams of salt, half a teaspoon of ground cardamom, and a quarter teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg. I've warmed up my milk to be between 35 and 38 degrees Celsius, or 95 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and it is 98 degrees right now, so Fahrenheit, that's perfect. I'm going to add one teaspoon of sugar, all of the yeast. I'm just going to whisk that together. And we're going to let this uh, stand off to the side while we prepare the rest of the ingredients. I put my flour in the bowl of my stand mixer. I have zested the lemon, melted the butter, and beaten the egg. In the bowl with the flour, I'm going to add the lemon zest, the spices, not the salt, and the sugar. And I'm going to mix that together. I'm going to make a well in the center of the bowl and I'm going to sprinkle the salt on the outer edge of the flour and the bowl, not in the well. The eggs go in the well. And the milk with the yeast, which has a nice head of foam on it, is going into the well as, as well. <laughs> also going into the well. This is definitely an enriched dough because it's, it has egg and sugar and soon butter. All right, I'm gonna clean up a little bit and I'm gonna put the bowl on the mixer to keep going. What I'm going to do is mix it for five minutes. Then I'm gonna add the melted butter and let it knead until it forms a ball. The mixture has been going for five minutes. I'm now going to add the butter. I'm going to turn the mixer back on and let it mix and knead until it forms a ball that is no longer sticky. It should be about 10 minutes. The dough has come together nicely. I did have to help it uh, along a few times. Uh, I used European butter, which has a higher butter fat co content, and I really had to help the mixer um, along the way by just pausing it and with my hands shaping it back. But now it's looking like a pretty nice ball. So I will be putting this in a warm spot for about an hour or until it's doubled in size. If you're enjoying this video, please click the like and subscribe button. It will really help our channel. If you want YouTube to notify you whenever we post a new video, click the bell. The dough has proofed for an hour and now I'm going to turn it out on my work surface that I lightly flour. And we get to actually push out all the air and shape it into a little bit of an oval. And now you know that I'm not very good at rolling things out, so we'll see if we get the right shape. Okay, so this is probably as good as I'm going to make it. 
I'm going to transfer it to the cookie sheet. I have lined my baking sheet with parchments to prevent it from sticking. And I'm going to make a cut in the right and left end of the oval. And we're going to just gently stretch this by just pulling and then roll it up like that. And the same here on this side. We're going to roll it towards the outer edge. Okay, mine doesn't necessarily look like a bone, but it doesn't matter, it's about the taste. I'm going to lightly cover this with some plastic wrap and in a warm spot of the house, let it rise for another 45 minutes. The bread's almost done rising, so I'm going to make my egg wash now. For that, I have one egg yolk, and I'm gonna mix one tablespoon of heavy cream or whipping cream through it. And this will give the crust a nice color and a little bit of a sheen. Okay, I'm going to set this off to the side and get the bread. Here it is, doesn't really look like a bone, but that's all right. I'm going to now brush egg wash on it. Now, a lot of bakers, when they make this, A, it looks like a bone, and B, they make intricate designs on it by using a very sharp knife and making cuts. I'm not that creative, so I'm just leaving mine plain, but this is where you can let your creativity run wild and after you're done with the egg wash and with a sharp knife, you can cut any pattern in the bread that you'd like. Make sure that you cover all of the bread with the egg wash. I love the smell of a yeasted dough. It's just, I don't know, comforting to me, I guess. It's really good. I'm looking forward to trying it. My oven is preheated at 200 degrees Celsius or 395 degrees Fahrenheit in non-convection mode. Rotate my tray around so I can make sure I got it all. Oh, like a little piece that I missed. I'm going to put it in the oven on the middle rack and I'm going to cook it for 30 minutes or until the internal temperature reaches 88 degrees Celsius or 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Keep an eye on it. If it browns too much, you may want to tent it with a little bit of aluminum foil and I will probably rotate it halfway through. I've just taken the divercata out of the oven after approximately 20 minutes. I took its internal temperature and it was already a little bit above the 190 degrees Fahrenheit, 88 degrees Celsius point. I rotated it halfway through, but I was actually too late already because these edges over here are already way darker than they need to be. Uh, pretty close to burn, so I did end up tenting it, but I was too late. The rest of the color is good, but these edges over here are a little darker than I would like. I'm gonna let this sit on the rack until it's completely cool, and then we'll try it. The bread's fully cooled off. Let's take a look at the bottom. That looks great. So now I'm gonna cut off a slice on the side that is a little bit too dark. I don't wanna serve that to other people. You can smell a little bit of the cardamom and the nutmeg. I can see, it, it might be hard to see on camera, but I can see a little piece of lemon in there. I'm gonna try the first bite without any butter. So, eight smakelijk. Mm. This tastes really good. There's just a hint of lemon in there, the cardamom and the nutmeg. I don't taste prominently, but it, there's a little bit of a warmth to the, to the bread. Of course, it's slightly sweet because of the sugar. Now, traditionally, this is eaten with some butter, so I'm gonna just put a little butter on there, or a lot of butter. <laughs> And try another bite. Hmm. I love the butter on there. And even though this was really dark, it doesn't taste burnt. So I, I think even though the shape is not quite right, this is a little darker than I want, this is a success. So I'm looking forward to serving this to some of my friends. So one of the things I learned when I was researching uh, the origins of this bread is that in the olden days, it was actually preferred to be eaten several days after it was made. But to me, a fresh loaf is absolutely fantastic. So I don't know why it used to be something that you would eat three to five days later, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to wait that long. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like and subscribe button and don't forget to share it with your friends. If you have any questions about the recipe, please leave them in the comments below.
You can find the written recipe on my website, twanskitchen.com, and you can follow me on social media. If you make a divercater, I would love it if you can take a photo of it, post it on Instagram with the hashtag twanskitchen. I'll feature it in my story and on my website. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.